Here's the issue with compact solar bases. While they're so cool and so easy and cheap to build, they are easy to raid, many of which cost roughly at max 2C4 to raid. And whether we like it or not, solar bases will never be as strong as group bases. Because the group that is able to farm 50,000 stone for a big base will always be stronger than the solo player that is only able to farm 10,000. And I want to change that notion, and today I think I found a solution. So here's my base. A few basic facts is it's really cheap, costing you 12,050 stone, 2,600 wood, and 1,900 metal frags. It's of course going to be intended for a solo or a duo, and the best part about it is it's three walls to get to the main loot, which is amazing for a base that's only 12,000 stone. So when somebody's readying a base, their goal is to get to the main loot. Here's where our main loot room is. It's an underground cellar. So let's see how many walls it takes to get to this room. Let's start with the sides. If a raider is raiding through the side, they'd probably blow through this area right here. So let's count how many walls it takes to get to the cellar. Wall 1, which is 4 rockets. Wall 2, 8 rockets. Wall 3, 12 rockets, and wall 4, 16 rockets. Raiders are obviously not as naive, so they're probably not going to blow through the side. Now people are going to be a little bit smart, and they're going to blow through the roof. And they might see this 45 degree roof sticking out, and they might want to raid through that so they can destroy the sheet metal flooring and the 45 degree roof. Now I mentioned this a while ago, but the 45 degree roof does not take splash damage to the sheet metal floor. Now as you see, if I go over here, the sheet metal floor of course is going to be affected, but the 45 degree roofs are not. Well, what does that mean for raiding through the roof then? So, blowing through the sheet metal floor is going to be one wall, which is four rockets. Blowing through the 45 degree roof is going to be two wall, so eight rockets. And another sheet metal flooring, so three walls, which is 12 rockets. Foundations are going to be about the same thing. So, foundation number one, four rockets. Foundation number two, eight rockets. And a normal stone wall, which is 12 rockets. Another cool thing about the base is it's built in phases, so here's phase 1. If you're curious for the cost of the phase, it costs 3,500 stone, 1,300 wood, and 900 metal frags. Obviously the metal frag cost is dependent on whether you're using sheet metal foundations, which is not available for some people, which I understand. And here's the final phase, which we're going to feature today, which I've already mentioned the price. And it doesn't stop there, you as a player need to continue to expand your base because without expansion, your base will be weak and will stay weak. Here we are, just a little quick tour. Notice how the exterior foundations are sheet metal, that way it takes longer to pick through the foundations. Armored door right here, I highly recommend having your exterior door as armored, that way it compensates for the weakness of sheet metal doors and because of this hatch right here, allowing you to look outside and check for door campers. Now obviously you're limited to your view, so I also recommend that you set up some shotgun trap system. The rest of the doors are going to be sheet metal because obviously it's a solo base. Behind this door leads to our center, and right behind this door we have a 45 degree roof with a dump chest run on top. So whatever you get from farming, I suggest you store in here until you can move it inside. Since the 45 degree roof is set up like this, it's kind of obvious that we're going to have an underground room. We're going to set that aside, but right now, here's two small boxes for you guys to store some tools, as well as a little bit of food. That way, if you're starving or you broke your tools, you don't have to go all the way through your base to resupply. Here's your shaped stairs. We have two small boxes right on top, one right here, and one right here. Store whatever you want in here. I haven't actually decided what I'd put in there, so I'm going to leave it up to you guys. Research table right here. I love these things. These things are awesome. I usually put a small box right next to it to store a lot of scrap, as well as one of each vital component. That way, if I needed anything like blades, I can go ahead and put it in the research table as well as a little bit of scrap to make myself some copies. On the opposite side of our research table, we have a pair of double doors. Behind these double doors links further into the base. Here's the cupboard right here behind the double doors, and I highly recommend that you put a lock on it, that way it's harder to grief you. We also got a carpet right here, which looks really cool, lantern right there, and a sleeping bag right here. We have two sleeping bags, so if you are thinking about building this base as a duo, you can. Cell gate right here, if you want to use double doors, go ahead and do so. I just like having a little bit of variety instead of straight up double doors. So in this little mini room, we have ourselves a furnace, a small box, and a campfire. In the small box, I recommend that you store some metal and some wood, that way you can smelt it in the furnace, and you can use the campfire for cooking up some food. We have a ladder hatch here that links down to our underground room, which really isn't underground, it's just within the foundations. This whole time, we are standing on sheet metal floors. This is where you're going to keep your main loot, because it's the hardest spot in the base to raid. 
from any direction, whether it's the roof, the foundations, the sides, it's always going to be three to four walls to get to this room. We have a ton of hemp plants down here because we're at ground floor, and three furnaces right here for some smelting if the one upstairs isn't quick enough. We also have a ton of boxes for storing some of your main loot. Right over here is where you're going to store your gear. So in the large box, we're going to store some of our clothing. In the top small box, we're going to store our weapons. And in the bottom small box, we're going to store some tools. Over in these large boxes is going to be our resource storage. So wood, stone, and metals right over here. And right next to that is going to be some components, and sulfur slash high qual. And in this last box right over here is going to be animal products, and I guess you could say a little bit of food. Another cool thing is that we can actually place more boxes by placing them on the foundation stairs. I put one right there and two more right over here. And if you want even more storage, you can always expand your base, like I said in the base explanation. And yeah guys, that's pretty much it for the base tour, so let's show you guys how to build it. To start this base build off, you're going to set up a 2x2 foundation combination at a relatively high height. From there, on every single side of the 2x2, you're going to place three triangles to form a trapezoid. That way we get something that looks like this. Then you're going to remove the center 2x2, so these four squares right here, until you can get just a solid honeycomb without a center. Then on one of the sides, you're going to place a foundation step going downwards, and another one right next to it. Once you're done with that, you're going to place another one going downwards so it's into the floor. That's why we have our foundations relatively high, so we can place foundation stairs down to. Now once you're done, you should get something that looks like this. From there, remove the initial foundation stairs, and then head down and place another two foundation stairs off of the lower one. So that way you get this little hill type thing. And this is the final product of your foundation plan. Go ahead and upgrade the foundation stairs to stone or metal, depending on what you have at the time. Most likely, it will be stone. Then on the end of the foundation stairs, you're going to place a normal wall. So right over here, you're going to place one, another one right here, and you can't place one right here, but you can place two more right here. Then you're just going to upgrade these to stone. Once you're done with that, upgrade everything else to sheet metal. Sheet metal will take longer to decay and is harder to pickaxe, so that's why we have our foundations as sheet metal. Then on any of the sides, place a single door frame, upgrade it to stone, and then place it in a wood door or sheet metal door in a code lock. Now obviously if you manage to upgrade your foundations to sheet metal, you're obviously going to have a code lock and a sheet metal door, but I'm going to use a wood door and a normal lock for reference. So before you place in the 45 degree roofs, you're going to place walls on two of the sides. So if I go ahead and place a 45 degree roof, as you see there's a hole in it. So what we're going to do to counter that is we're going to place two walls right here and one on the other side, because we already have the doorway there. Now go ahead and upgrade it to stone. I highly recommend that you upgrade it to sheet metal though, that way nobody can pick in. From there, go ahead and place in the 45 degree roofs and upgrade them. Now you have this little protected hut, which you should be safe for now unless somebody starts pickaxing your wall. Which is once again a reason why I recommend that you upgrade it to sheet metal. Now you can go ahead and set up the interior however you like. I'd place a bag right there, a furnace or two in this corner over here, and three boxes on the opposite corner. That's personally how I'd do the interior, and I'll show you how to do a cupboard in a second. In order to place a cupboard, it's going to be quite tricky. You can't just place a cupboard on the ground because it doesn't work that way. So what you're going to do is you're going to get your floor tiles and place them in the form of a 2x2. Then you're going to pick one of the squares, it really doesn't matter which square, and you're going to place it on the corner. You can't place it towards the 45 degree roof because it won't let you. Then remove all the other squares and then upgrade it to sheet metal. Make sure you authorize yourself. And that's pretty much it for phase 1 guys, so once again, the door frames and the walls, I recommend that you upgrade the sheet metal, because as you can already see, it's a super easy rate if you go through that using pickaxes, so once again, upgrade that to sheet metal. And my personal recommendation is that you only stay at phase 1 for the first, maybe 4 hours of white. Once you have a little bit of metal, if your foundations are still stone, upgrade those to sheet metal. Then from there, remove the normal lock and wooden door and fill it in with the sheet metal door and code lock. Obviously, I already set up the foundations to sheet metal, so I don't need to do that. 
Now head around back and head on top of your 45 degree roofs. On the side that's kind of open, this side right here, the way it went up, you're going to place two walls right here, so it fills in for a 2x2. Two two. And this is how your base should look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upgrade this doorway right here, this wall right here, and the two walls on the other side of sheet metal, because this is a weak point, because as you see, if they pickaxe through this, they're already in. Now you're just going to place in some sheet metal flooring on top. From your doorway, what you're going to do is you're going to look to your left, and you're going to place a triangle right here. Then you're going to place a square, and then you're going to repeat this pattern as triangle square, triangle square, triangle square. Pretty simple, just upgrade these foundations to sheet metal. Now what we're going to do is we're going to build under our roof once again, just place a U-shaped stair like so and you can get up quite easily. And we're going to highlight this triangle right here, this triangle right here, and this triangle right here. So we get that trapezoid shape that we saw at the beginning. These three triangles are what we're going to focus on for a honeycomb. Now since this is the side of the entrance, we're going to replace this wall right here with a door frame. But every single other trapezoid will be just simply walls. Now that you're done with your walling, place triangle floor tiles on top and upgrade them to sheet metal. Now that your honeycombing is done, you're going to place in a sheet metal door and a code lock. Then you're going to head inside and place in your sheet metal flooring. If you already have your sheet metal flooring down because you set up your cupboard early, then you're already ahead of me. Then if you haven't already placed your cover down, I don't know how your base hasn't been griefed yet, but if you haven't placed your cover down, go ahead and place it on this square right here. Then you're going to place a double door frame on the cupboard side right there. And to show you what side I put it on a little clearly, there you go. And then what you're going to do is you're going to throw that out and then upgrade the double door frame to stone. Then place a pair of double doors right there. They can face in or out, it really doesn't matter to be honest. And then once you're done with that, head on inside make sure you can go through and then you're going to place a wall right here then you're going to get a sleeping bag and place it to the right of the cupboard so right here place a carpet right in front of the bag so right here that way it looks a little nicer once done you're going to place a small furnace right behind the cupboard so right there to the left of the small furnace you're going to place a small box from there you're going to get your building plan and place another double door frame right there upgrade it to stone and inside the double door frame you're going to place a cell gate place the box horizontally like so then rotate a research table and place it vertically. Then place U-shaped stairs so the platform faces you. You can rotate it using R. And then before you upgrade it, you're going to place two boxes on top. Then you're going to upgrade your stairs to stone or wood, it doesn't really matter. And from there, you're going to place two boxes like so. Pretty easy. Then you're going to head down to your ground floor. And as you see, we already have our three boxes in because we placed them at the start. Then you're going to place three furnaces in this corner right here. If you already have the two furnaces down, all you have to do is place one. Then in the opposite corner to your ladder hatch, what you're going to do is you're going to place your large box and two small boxes. So we're going to place a large box right there, and then we're going to place two small boxes right next to that. Then you're going to replace your front sheet metal door with an armored door. And once you're done with that, you're pretty much done at the base build. So anyways, guys, thank you all so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.